Yeah, so I think uh, following on the new technology that you mentioned, uh, we're going to then hear uh, Luke and Misha, who uh, follow on who just arrived. Um, Luke and will be introduced by uh, Sunil, um, who knows him uh, better than I do. So, Sunil. Well, our next speaker is Mr. Luke and Misha, and he's a vitreo rational surgeon from Bulgaria. Lucan's an international leader in the specialty and discipline of 3D visualization for both cataract surgery and visual retinal surgery, and has uh, published many innovations in this area. I'm really looking forward to seeing your talk, and thank you so much for coming all the way from Bulgaria to talk to us about this today. Hi, thank you for having me and for the invitation to participate in the, this forum. I will talk about uh, my um, my vision. What and how the 3D visualization will change in our practice. These are my disclosures, and some of them are uh, particularly related to the topic. Uh, I will talk about mainly two systems which I had experience with. Uh, this is the ingenuity, and we all know the, let's say, the industry explanations, but what is important here is that we have a manual depth control which controls the exposure, but the depth of focus also, and we have a HDR sensors, meaning high dynamic range sensors, paired to a high dynamic range OLED screen. Uh, further on, I will elaborate why this is important. Uh, this is me doing the first human surgeries with the c -Luma. Uh, microscope, the new completely digital um, platform from BNL, developed by Munich Surgical Imaging. They have uh, two 4K sensors, but have in mind that the um, screen is Sony LCD, it's not a high dynamic range, and there is some digital trick which somehow overcomes the um, physics of the optics called digital focus stacking. Meaning that when we increase the magnification, we don't lose a resolution. Uh, this is something that comes out from the triangle of light, which is light intensity, depth of focus, and horizontal resolution. If you touch one of these components, it will deteriorate the others. With the digital focus stacking, they sort of get away with it. It's interesting. Uh, while we are speaking or talking about dynamic range, what is the basic meaning of dynamic range? This is the ability of single pixels, pixel of the matrix to produce meaningful image data in the lowest possible light condition and the highest possible light condition. Meaning this is the uh, window of acquisition of the image. The human eye has roughly 100 decibels uh, dynamic range and in cinematography, the dynamic range is recalled as stops. One stop is equal to six decibels. Just for the comparison with um, mid-range DSLR or high-end cinema cameras, they are with 40 and 78 decibels uh, dynamic range, and the ingenuity is closer to the human eye, which is good. So, here on the graph, you can on the plot, you can see the camera sensors of each available surgical systems at the moment. So with the ingenuity, you have two by 1080p. Sizer table claims two 4K, Bionix one two 8K, etc. One thing is which is important that higher resolution on similar size sensors means smaller pixels. Pixel size determines the dynamic range. And the most important thing is that if we have high dynamic range, we will see more from the picture. So another thing which is important is called instrumental presbyopia, meaning that where we are looking through the oculars, if I'm not in presbyopic age, my accommodation increases or multiplies, multiplies the depth of focus of the analog microscope. With the digital systems, it's far vision, and we are independent from our presbyopia, which for me is important because I'm presbyopic now. Um, here you can appreciate how you can see the fundus of the eye without any contact lens, wide, view, uh, wide field viewing system, or something like that. Just 
by utilizing the ingenuity, depth of focus control and imaging capabilities. Um, here in the past there was some concerns about the latency. Now would I allow myself to tease the capsule in such manner if I have latency? So nowadays with the ingenuity I don't perceive the latency as an issue at all. Something else which might be interesting. Let me see if it will run. Yeah. Uh, digital filtering. This is the future of our visualization. We need to forget about the classic analog view. This is uh, autofluorescence of the vessels and uh, it can be utilized, for example, in angle based surgery to see the, the episcleral um, vessels uh, bleaching, etc. So this is achieved without any dye uh, given into the patient or used in the eye. Uh, next thing, of course, you can use it in the posterior pole also uh, to see if there is a perfusion or not. It's, it's debatable what will be the role of such type of uh, uh, filter. Another thing which is important might be the digital filtering of the anterior segment. These are um, proprietary filters which I created. This is for fundus enhancement. And in my opinion, it dramatically, dramatically changed uh, the way I perceive the cortex, the nuclear, nuclear pieces, and the fundus reflex. It's not a red reflex, it's a fundus reflex. So with the digital filtering, if you increase your image data perception, it doesn't matter what the color is. It's a matter of contrast playing. So for example, here uh, you can uh, see what happens with the um, in INA, on the left side, it's a regular image. This comparison is achieved uh, by mounting two ingenuity systems on same microscope. So it's fairly simultaneous as a comparison. And later on, in turn, of course, in editing, they are stuck together. Uh, next thing that will come probably will be uh, as we might define as augmented reality. This is area of interest filtering because if we filter like we do it now, all the image, we have the area of interest highlighted, but we lose a lot of details in the peripheral area of the eye. For example, limbus and uh, vessels of the sclera are not well seen with the filter applied. So if we, uh, we can implement an area of interest or uh, a zone which we will only filter and the rest of the eye will look like a normal eye, I believe this will be the next um, thing for the industry to think about it and to implement in the ingenuity system or other digital visualization system. Uh, this is an eye line enhancement filter. Again, the settings is two ingenuity systems on the same microscope and you can appreciate on the left side image uh, the contrast difference. Basically with digital filtering we are playing with the contrast borders and we want to highlight them in between tissues with similar refractive properties. Here you might appreciate how during fluid air exchange on the left side with the filter you might have less reflections and more detailed borders of the structures that you're targeting with your instrument. Uh, right image, it's a regular image with a regular, a regular posterior uh, mode of visualization of the ingenuity. And something quite new and interesting, this is intraoperative fluorescent angiography. Uh, I did my first in August last year uh, what is important here is that this is a diabetic case, of course, you can appreciate uh, the retinal vasculature and also the choroidal perfusion. And my method of achieving this image is through digital filtering. So I'm not using a hardware-based barrier filter on the microscope. So you just need a, a dedicated uh, end illumination light source, which is able to excite the fluorescein and digital filter which is perfectly 
let's say, in the um, capabilities uh, of the engineering. I mean, it's perfectly suitable at the moment. So it's not something that will come. It is everyday routine for our practice. So you can appreciate the capillary dropouts here. And um, for the first time, the engineering team becomes from a image visualization system to a diagnostic interoperative tool, or you might use the word, word navigation device. Um, the next video is interesting case that we had, and it was uh, at the end of the day, we qualified this as an uh, impending um, ischemic neuropathy. So you see um, the early fluorescence of the optic disc and um, it's not a healthy, let's say, appearance. So we are afraid that this might be an ischemic event and we did intraoperatively RTPA with fraxiparin and somehow we either got lucky or we saved the eye, but the patient on the next day, he had, he had a vision. So uh, this is another case where the intraoperative fluorescein angi angioscopy might be useful. Here, this is a blood collection. It's not a bleeding vessel because if it was a bleeding vessel, there will be a fluorescence. And also uh, during uh, uh, diabetic cases, you might find uh, leaking spots and you can use the diatermy in order to, um, to prevent this bleeding. So it becomes more and more interoperative tool for me uh, to, to alter my decisions. Do I need to do a PRP or which are the areas on which I need to do the laser or endodiatermy and so on. Uh, this is quite new, fluoroscopic vitrectomy. Uh, since 1979, Mahemer introduced the vitrectomy. And since that time, we are actually guessing where is the vitreous, or we anticipate uh, by a flow rate or something like that, that we are eating vitreous and we are, we are not in the water. With a fluorescein instilled in the eye in the proper concentration, which is 0.01%, uh, we can achieve a fluoroscopic vi visualization and myself, at least, I was so surprised how many vitals I leave in the eye after I thinking, I'm thinking that I, I clean it. Why? Because with the fluorescein, you can see the vitals. You don't need to guess where is the vitals. So this is a comparison between a regular view with fluorescein, which is quite helpful, actually, and then compared to fluoroscopic view where you can see everything. Uh, this is another um, example of the same uh, imaging modality. Um, you might be surprised how much vitreous is in the eye, especially in the periphery. And here you can see a vitreo retinal adhesion and the communications between the base of the vitreous and the mid, -per uh, mid peripheral area with lattice where we know by the anatomy that there are adherentials of the vitreous, but here you can see them and uh, safely remove them without causing any additional break or uh, tear. And also, if you want, you can actually uh, visualize the supretinal fluid. So we all know the Schlieren phenomena, but here is quite well visible. You see, again, fluoroscopic visualization. So we might assume that we drained everything here. Uh, also, in our current reality, we have live streaming, we broadcast what we are doing, we record, we share our knowledge with uh, uh, recordings and videos. For teaching, it's absolutely indispensable too. So uh, I do believe that the heads of displays are here to stay, and especially their uh, ability to modify the image and to extract more data from it. Uh, also, remote training and ob observation in real time and 4K 3D, it can be done via VR glasses like uh, Goovis Pro or something else. So uh, you can do a remote mentoring or teaching or 
uh, that your audience will see exactly the same or similar image as you in the OR. And yeah, now there is a metaverse also. And uh, there are events uh, organized by MetaMet where you can share your 3D content in, a, let's say, avatar metaverse experience. It's quite odd, I must say, but it's something new and at least it, the digital system with our videos gives us the opportunity to participate. We will see if that will be our next type of communication. And last but not least, in difficult posturing scenarios where the patient is with bacterial disease or something like that, you can tilt the microscope however you want without changing your um, routine position and you can still do the job. In the past, we needed to operate such patients like standing up, which is risky and uh, uh, sometimes it's uh, not uh, really easy. And uh, if that will change something for the patient care, I will leave that question to you. Thank you.